Good morning. Hi everyone, my name is Jack. I am a digital designer and today we are designing a hot sauce brand from scratch. I've been really excited about doing this one. I have an idea and a direction of where I want to go with this. Um, I'm going to be putting some personal touches into it. And honestly, I wanna go different from where hot sauces kind of are right now. I got inspired to do this because I am a big fan of hot ones and and honestly I love hot sauce myself and I just kind of noticed so much of the packaging isn't in line with something that would draw my attention and I'm guilty for purchasing items a lot because of their branding. So I noticed that there wasn't really a fun hot sauce that I have seen out there. I really think that there's room for something more youthful in, in the hot sauce industry. So let's get into it. All right, so first things first is I like to start off with a name, obviously. Here's kind of where my personal touch comes in. My best friend's name is Malia Kai, and my name is Jacqueline Ann. And so our middle names together make Kai Ann, and Kai Ann's obviously a pepper that is used in a lot of hot sauces. Um, this is kind of something that has run deep with us for a while now. On my keychain, I have a little pepper on it. In my phone, her name is Mal with a little pepper emoji next to it. And we even went as far as to get matching tattoos while we were in Thailand of, of a cayenne pepper. Um, ew. Don't zoom in too far on that. You're going to regret it. Um, but yeah, so cayenne peppers are kind of a... A staple for me if you look at my website if you look at my instagram even my logo has a pepper in it it's just so fun i love it so much i think it's a unique thing to pull from keeps things a little spicy a little interesting so that's what we're gonna go with uh k-a-i dash a-n-n um i even might throw an e on the end for pure aesthetics if i think we need it so it's gonna be cayenne's hot sauce now that we have the name picked out we're gonna check pinterest we're gonna make a mood board slash stylescape just get some inspiration find what the current market has going on and um see how we really want to make this different so i have gone ahead and searched pinterest so as you can see here as we scroll through the hot sauce is kind of boring um, I don't know if you I don't know if you guys eat a lot of hot sauce, but you know when you go to the supermarket and You're looking at the wall and everything just kind of gets lost because there's just so much with the branding happening um, There's either not enough kind of like this one or there's too much happening like this where like I don't know that this one specifically would be one cohesive brand there are all of the labels are so different which can be fun, but for me, if I'm looking for one of these flavors, I'm not going to it's not going to be easy for me to find. I think that there are so many that just have a little bit too much going on. Hot sauce bottles aren't really that big, so something like a beer label, um a beer label design can have a lot of things going on because they're typically bigger, they're typically in a box, they're typically is so much more room to play around with. So when you when you try to take that same mentality and put it on something smaller, it's kind of difficult. I love the idea of making hot sauce labels interesting and unique, but there's a specific line between fun and funky and interesting and something you can look at and something that's just a little bit too busy and becomes unrecognizable. So for me, this Truff branding is incredible. I think that it's very simple. It's very straight to the point. Just the black label, big white letters, like you're looking at a wall, your eye is going to be drawn to that. Um, I want to do something a little bit more fun and unique, so that's not necessarily the direction I'm going in. But for me, I had to look elsewhere for my inspiration. I had to look at skincare brands. I had to look at um, designer that I'm inspired by. I, ha I had to look at my own boards that um, I had separated for style inspiration. So, so that's kind of where this board comes into play. Um, I recognize that the market is saturated with red and green as the hot sauce colors makes sense a pepper typically red and green um, you're gonna have a red hot sauce you're gonna have a verde sauce I think that it does make sense but I also think that like I said it your designs going to get lost in a sea of red and green so I kind of want to do something different 
However, I'm obsessed with this bright orange red color right here. So I would love to be able to pull that in somehow. Um, I also really like this like bright cobalt blue kind of color. Um, I don't want it to come off like blue and orange Broncosy, but I also don't want it to come off blue and red like America because that's just not the direction I'm going in. So I really want to make something unique. I like that these colors are different. I don't know if you would necessarily see these colors for hot sauces. Um, something about like pink and a soft purple don't really scream hot sauce. And I kind of love that. I really like the approach of kind of shocking people. I want this brand to be young. I want it to be funky. I want it to be inclusive. I want it to be somewhat timeless. Um, I know that this kind of a design is really popular now. Um, even kind of the, the influence from the 70s, the funky, really, really big right now. I don't know the longevity of it, so I do want to tone it down and kind of let colors speak for themselves, but also this is just for fun, so we'll see where it goes. For the typography, I'm really drawn to this kind of um, hand-drawn lettering here and in the this is it right here. Kel Lauren is another YouTuber. I'm sure every single one of you know about them. They're huge in graphic design and, and every time I see them do the hand-drawn lettering on their YouTube channel, I'm like, I need I need to add this to one of my videos. I need to add this to one of my designs. It's not personally in my style usually, but I I want to add it. I don't think everything needs to be simple, clean, um, sans serif on like a clean background with like big bubbles behind it. I don't I don't think everything needs to be so boring and similar to everything else. And I think that when I saw them do this. Uh, like hand-drawn lettering for their video where they made uh, a brand for from scratch for plants. It's called Node. Um, I just like fell in love with it. I, it inspired me so much and um, I'm really stoked to have been able to see that because it did open my eye to a different kind of design that you can do. It can be young, it can be fun. It doesn't have to be this like stuck up corporate thing. And especially for like this, direction I'm going in for Cayenne's hot sauce. I do want it to be funky. I want it to be fun. I want it to be all those things that like really stands out against the kind of plain boring designs that I see at the supermarket. Um, I'd like to play a little bit with maybe lips. Um, I think that it's fun and it's hot. It's a little bit spicy. I really like this one with the pepper in the mouth, even these ones too. Uh, I think I'm going to go more in this design style. Um, I also like the idea of matches, um, adding maybe the Kai dash ands, maybe having like a little match as the dash. Um, I'm, I worry that I'm trying to do a little bit too much in it, but I just want to be able to have stuff to pull from and play around with. So these are all things that I'm going to include into my mood board and stylescape and just kind of see what works together and what doesn't. Um, I'm not gonna force anything, um, but the more ideas that you have to start with, the, the better off you can be in the more directions you can go down. So I like to kind of have a bunch of different directions. I actually, so for me, when I'm working with a client, and I'm sending them three different mood boards, or I call them stylescapes, they're a little bit different. Um, when I send them three different stylescapes, I actually call the versions mild, medium, and spicy, which is really funny and very fitting for this. So maybe, I'm, maybe I'll go ahead and do that. I'll just make three different um, versions for me to pick and then go off of from there. But um, the mild is obviously like something that's going to be very safe, very basic, um, will work, but won't necessarily be like, hey, like this is wild and out there. And then the spicy on the other end is something that's like, whoa, I would have never thought about this. This is very different. This is not anything like what I'm seeing out there. It's a little bit of a risk, but let's do it. And then the medium is somewhere in the middle of kind of going outside of the comfort zone, thinking outside of the box, but um, not going so far outside of the box that people are like, what the hell is going on? 
Um, so yeah, maybe I, I, I think I'll do that. Good morning again. Um, <clears throat> I took a little bit of a break. Um, oh my goodness. Um, I am very tired today. Designing? <laughs> Designing intoxicated is my favorite. Um, nothing quite like it. I just went through and finished up working through my mood boards. I have three of them. I have three stylescapes. I have mild, medium, and spicy. So we're we're gonna dive into our mild stylescape. Um, before we really go into it though, I want to talk about how I set up my stylescape. Usually I like to do some version of like how I think the logo might go or some type of nice typography uh, or colors. Um, over here, I usually pick a font, um, but because I know that I'm going to be doing some more like hand lettering style, no matter which one I pick, um, I didn't go ahead and pick any fonts. This is just my default, the Azo Sans that I have on here. Same with body copy. Um, I, I think that that'll come after I pick my stylescape. Uh, and then I usually name my colors. That's like one of my favorite parts of design. I think it's so fun to get creative with that, but uh, I'm going to save that for when I pick one and then dive into it deeper. So you're going to see across all of the stylescapes that there are pieces of the stylescape that should be filled in and that I would if this were for a genuine client. But for me, um, I don't feel the need to go ahead and like do those things because I know the vision of it down the road. So as you can see, this one um, feels more feminine. It feels more fiery still some bold colors in there but kind of softer i guess i would say um i like the elements of the lips um maybe i do some vector illustrations of like matches in the mouth on fire i want to incorporate vector bodies um no matter which stylescape i go with but this i really thought fit into it because we do have some fiery colors like the red and the orange but we also have some softer more neutral colors with the browns and the beiges if I were to go this route, I think I would have a lot of fun with playing with the match idea and playing with fire and spice just to kind of offset the feminine feel and bring a little bit more spice into it. And then over here, what I do is I do agree that like true black and true white aren't necessarily the best things in design and that you should avoid it as much as possible. However, I know that it exists and um, I like to do this because I like to know uh, how the colors work on dark and light backgrounds and if there's enough contrast for each of the colors. Accessibility is a huge thing. If you are working with real clients, I would look up sites that uh, will test your colors and how they stack on top of each other and how they work. Um, there needs to be a certain level of contrast between colors and I think inclusivity is huge and that's something really important to look at. I feel like I'm particularly good at telling the difference between little colors. I just think that I have a great eye for that, which is why I'm in design. But even, even people who aren't colorblind can have a hard time differentiating colors like even this red and this orange I think that might be hard for people to notice so just keeping those things in mind as you move forward I think is really important but as I said this is a fun brand it's not necessarily going to be for a genuine client so going those extra steps I don't think is necessary because at this point I'm just trying to have fun with it okay the second one is our medium option all of these are a little spicier than I think I would go for a client but I want to have fun, so I'm going to make some spicy stuff. This one I think is very sexy, it's very vibrant. Um, I would love to play with the concept of fire. This electric yellow I just feel like stands out. Again, there's still a lot of like reds and oranges in it, which I think is safer because I mean, hot sauce, peppers, I think that it makes sense. Um, originally, I was going with more of a lime green than an electric yellow, and that felt a lot more medium to me. It felt safe to me because um, red and green, it's it's very, very obvious. But as I said before, I really want, the, I would want this to stand out amongst the crowd. And with the electric yellow, uh, 
I think that that would really work. These are the main brand colors that I would see. Um, as you can see, the electric yellow works great against the black, but not at all against the white. So just being able to keep those things in mind for as you begin to think about the brand as a whole and how you're gonna incorporate the things together, I think that that's really important. My one worry if this was a true brand is that I don't know how electric yellow prints. I've never worked with it. So keeping these things in mind of like the logistics, it's not just about what looks good. It's more about like what what is actually realistic and what will actually work out in the end. If this were a real client, again, I would do that digging. This is for aesthetics for me, so that's where I'm at. And then this next one is spicy. As you can see, like, n yes, there's an orange and yes, there's a green and yes, those are hot sauce colors, but mixed with this cobalt blue and mixed with this baby pink, I don't know if this really screams hot sauce and I love that. Since I started making these style scapes, I was like, this is the one I'm going for. Like, without a doubt, hands down, I love this orange, I love the blue, and when I saw this picture and I saw the green and the baby pink, I was like, done, the end, whatever. Um, this is definitely it. And I love it so much. It really isn't the safe option at all in terms of um, it being like, oh, that's a hot sauce brand. Um, it doesn't scream it. So really building those elements and those assets around it i think is key if i were to go this route with this one i would play a lot with um, extra little illustrations and little details large blocks of color with um, vector bodies and like really focus on that while i want it to stand out i really don't want things to be too busy in this and i feel like this one would be easy to go overboard on um, it is already kind of overboard but in a fun way uh, I think this gives very 80s, very 90s vibes. It's nostalgic, it's funky. I think that it's like very in with the times right now. I don't know the longevity of it, but I'm obsessed with it. I think that this color palette is awesome and it's also something I would never pick, which I think is cool. I'm really pushing myself outside of my comfort zone. I'm used to more muted colors, safer colors because I'm used to working with brands that want that, but I said spicy, so we went spicy. All that being said, when I did this one, this was originally going to be my mild option. This was going to be just like the basic greens, the basic reds, but when I saw this photo, it, it made everything make sense for me. I mean, it's so vibrant. When I think about the possibilities that I could go with patterns, with um, even just like this little guy right here, like the hot, the heat coming out of his ears. Like, I think that that's awesome. And I really love the way it, it screams hot sauce to me, even though it's not like the typical way you would do it. Like if I were to see that on a hot sauce bottle, I'd be like, what a awesome way to stay in the bounds, but also push them. And so I'm really torn right now. I don't know which route I want to go. You know what? This is where I was going the entire time, but this really threw me off course. And I think it threw me off course for a reason. I think I have to go with the medium option. I mean, let me know what you guys think. If you wanna see me make another hot sauce brand with this one, or if you wanna see me make a hot sauce brand with all of them and see how they differ from each other. So let me know if you wanna see that. So step three um, is where I begin with the logo design. What I would normally do is I would sit here and I, I would write the name of the company and I would go through all of my fonts and I would see which ones really catch my eye. However, again, like I said, I'm doing some hand lettering stuff. So I don't necessarily know if this is the most important step for me to go through. So what I'm going to do actually is I'm gonna try and trace a couple different types of cayennes and see what I can do and then um, I will go through that process of, of going through types to see what matches my hand lettering design for the tagline. So basically this is going to be Cayenne's hot sauce, um, hot sauce for hot people. I just think that that's cool. I think that inclusivity is hot. I think hot sauce is hot. I think that it's all around. It's just gonna, it's just fun. This, this is it is really like, I just found this and it's such a huge inspiration for how I want the hand lettering to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started on that and let's see how it goes.
This is kind of like a rough idea. Uh, I'm, I'm gonna clean it up a little bit, but a rough idea of where I wanna go. Um, I have the fire inside of the A. I have the fire as the apostrophe. I have the fire over the I, and I have the fire as the dash. And I like all of these versions. I think they're strong. So I went ahead and started to like, try to figure out what some secondary logos would be like. And I really like the way these ones look. They're not cleaned up, but I'm not, I feel like this one has more opportunity because there are three types of logos. So there's a logo type, a logo mark, and then one with both. So for example, um, Nike, let's pull up Nike. So you have the swoop, which is going to be the logo mark or logo graph or logo icon. Like there's so many different names for it, but it's whatever the symbol is or the icon that is associated with it. And then you also have the logo type. So just the Nike part um, outside of the logo mark. And then you have one with both of them in it. And that's traditionally what I think of a logo is something that has both a logo mark and a logo type together. Um, it's not necessary at all, but in my opinion, when I'm working with brands, I'm thinking about scale. I'm thinking about growth. Maybe not where they're at right now, but where they could be in the future. And for me, that, that the majority of the time requires having some sort of logo mark intermixed in there. So Nike, when you just see the swoosh, is recognizable just with the swoosh. It's recognizable just with the word Nike. It's also recognizable together. And I think that all of those things really provide um, opportunity for recognition, opportunity for versatility. I think that just when you give yourself more opportunities to use different kinds of things that can still be recognizable, I think that that can really help in the long run. I will say if this were a new business that just uh, an icon or the logo mark isn't going to be sufficient, what I perceive is important for growth and expansion in the first couple years for a business is really having the Nike word and the symbol together, so the logo mark and the logo type together so that people can start to associate those things together. And then once that happens and you're on such a large scale that you're recognizable with one or the other, that's when you can kind of branch off. But again, like you have to keep that in mind while you're designing. You have to keep some sort of understanding for the growth in the future. Do I think that this is necessary for every company? Absolutely not. Do I think that it would be awesome for this one? Because let's say we want a website. When you're looking at a website, you have these things called favicons or favicons. I think they're favicons, favicons, I don't know. But you have this thing that goes in the corner. And for me, this fire would be perfect for that. And so that's why I'm leaning more towards this one. This one just feels like it has more opportunity for me. So I think because of that, I'm gonna go ahead and go with, I'm gonna go ahead and delete that one. That one's not strong at all. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm not necessarily gonna delete these. Just in case I change my mind, I don't think I'm going to, but I'm just gonna put them off to the side. And same with these ones. Um, I'm gonna put them off to the side. But I think that it's safe to say that some version of this one is going to be the primary logo and then playing around with these a little bit more will be our secondary logos. Okay, I'm gonna clean these up a little bit and once that's done, we will get into color.
put my glasses on because I am, my eyes are getting bloodshot. Um, so this is kind of what I've come up with for the main primary logo and then some logo variations. But anyway, let's add some color. Now that we can kind of see what our brand and vision is going to look like for the logo and the logo variations and how the colors work together and stack on top of another, I think that it's safe to move on to the next part, which is um, adding in some images and some mock-ups. I don't think photographs are necessarily part of this brand. I picture this to be fully vector art based, so I'm going to continue on with that kind of a vibe. and. Um, mock some things up and I'm gonna work on that off camera and then once they're all finished I will show you the final result I've mocked up a few things with the branding and without further ado here is Cayenne's hot sauce brand in total All right guys, that is Cayenne's hot sauce all completed. Um, I would love to know what you guys think. I'm really excited with the way it turned out. 
I'm glad I went with the medium option. I think that the the yellow just gets me every time. So I honestly just had fun with it. And so that's, again, like why I do this. I would have never thought to create something like this on my own had I not had like an environment like this. So I just feel really supported by my friends and family who are genuinely interested in what I do with my day to day and what I do with my life. And I, I just hope you enjoyed the whole process. Um, so again, thank you for watching and I'll see you guys next Thursday. All right, good night.